The St. Louis Blues are Stanley Cup champions. That became the case after they beat the Boston Bruins 4-1 to last night in Game 7 to capture their first Stanley Cup title in their franchise's history after 52 years. After being last place in the league on January 3rd, they fired their coach and replaced their coach with Craig Berube. They also replaced um, their goaltender with Jordan Bennington, giving them a reliable goaltender for the first time in a long time. That made a difference, and their trade acquisition started to come through. They're, they were criticized for giving away pieces, but their trade acquisition started to come through. They beat the Winnipeg Jets in round one, the Dallas Stars in round two, the San Jose Sharks in the Western Conference Finals, and then the Boston Bruins in the Stanley Cup Finals. Going into the Stanley Cup Finals, they knew they were facing a team that was tougher than them. The Bruins love to use all the ice. They rush up fast and the Blues win for a challenge. And it was evident that the Bruins were the better team when they won game one, four to two. But the Blues were resi resilient in game two. And then when, even though Boston took a one goal lead twice, they tied it up and eventually won on Carl Gunnarsson's overtime goal. But that momentum quickly faded as they lost seven to two in game three. In Game 4, they eked out a 2-1 win with Ryan O'Reilly scoring both goals, and they sent it back to Boston for a Game 5. In that series, in that, in that Game 4, Zidane Ochara, the captain of the Bruins in his 21st season, had taken a puck to the face and had a reportedly broken jaw, but he, st but he put on a full cage and he played in Game 5. Gave a boost to the Bruins, but it wasn't enough as the Blues prevailed. Going home to Game 6, they had a chance to win the Cup, and with the Cup in the building, they were nervous. Bennington did not play well, and the Bruins won 5-1. to one. That set the stage for Game 7. Game 7 was one, it was easily the, the Blues' best team unit game of the playoffs. Boston attacked. They had the puck for the first couple minutes, and then they, but then they only got a couple shots, and then Boston started attacking. They had a power play, and Jordan Bennington was absolutely brilliant. He stopped Marchand on the shot that he had sliding from left to right. He stopped David Krejci and Marcus Johansson on breakaways in tight, and he made a a lot of other saves to keep it at 0-0. Zero, zero. There was a shot timer and they went over 16 minutes without taking a single shot on net. But suddenly they got it into the zone. They were able to take uh, they, they were able to take um, get the puck around the boards and suddenly there were three St. Louis players at the point. One player and only Ryan O'Reilly was at the net. Um, the pass came to Jay Bomeister, and the left-handed defenseman let a rip, and it was tipped by Ryan O'Reilly through the pads of Tuukka Rask to make it to make it one nothing. Then the Bruins pressed a little bit, and then. And the period was almost over as the final 30 seconds were winding down. And the Blues got out of their zone. Blues got out of their zone. And then, I don't know what happened, but Brad Marchand and another Bruins defense player made a terrible change. While Jason Schwartz was putting the puck deep in their zone, they were going for changes. I don't know if... Um, they, I don't know if they were yelled at to come from the bench or they just thought it was an appropriate time, but it wasn't because that made it a four-on-two. That left the Blues captain, Alex Petrangelo, free, and he buried a nice backhand shot to make it 2 nothing. And that, that silenced um, TD Garden because the Bruins were hoping to go into the second period just down one, 
goal, but now they are suddenly down two goals. The Blues knew they were going to be facing an onslaught, and they were right. So they just went into a 90s kind of, not exactly a, a shell, they, but they played great defense. At some times, they, the Bruins would be having the puck, and they would have four guys literally stocking up the, a wall at, the, at their blue line, and the Boston couldn't get in. They were blocking shots, and the best part of all, Jordan Bennington was playing absolutely unbelievable. And they started playing 90s hockey. The referees weren't calling penalties, even though the fans were getting upset. And they did they did just whatever 90s play they did. They hooking, tripping a, a bit, um, slashing, whatever they needed to do. They also played great defense. And they got out of the second period still with a 2 nothing lead. And then came the third and the last chance for the Bruins. And they were shooting, and look, for the first 10 minutes, like, St. Louis would just have to hold on. Then Vladimir Tarasenko, who already had a good chance of a turnover earlier in the period, stole, stole a puck and went deep. He saw a player cutting for the net. He passed him the puck right through, I, it was, I believe it was Braden Shen. He passed him right through Zidane Tarasenko's skates. And he buried it. It may have been Jaden Schwartz. And he buried it. And I think Schwartz, he buried it right into the bottom corner. Raz did not see it. It was so quick. It happened like in the snap of her fingers. And it was 3 nothing. And that, a lot of fans started leaving. But the Blues weren't done. As David Ferran beat two Bruins defenders in the corner for the puck and then fed it out to Zach Sanford, who was, who's from, who was from Boston and grew up a Bruins fan. That made it 4 nothing with about four minutes left. So the Bruins needed a goal every minute. They, didn't, they, only, they pulled the goalie a minute later, and Matt Grizzlick was able to put a puck past Jordan Bennington. That was it. The bench, the bench was so... They knew that the Bruins could get hot at any moment. And even when they were winning with a couple of seconds left, they didn't go until they cleared it one final time with five, eight seconds left. It went down the ice, but not far enough for icing. Toy Krug was skating back, and that was when the clock hit zero, and they went nuts. They had done it. The, la the team that was in last place on January 3rd was now Stanley Cup champions. At, in a, one of my favorite moments watching the post-game interview was Ryan O'Reilly. He was talking about, um, about winning the Cup, and he, he said the F word, and then he was so sorry to the reporter, and everyone had a good laugh about that. And there was also a young girl who was surprised, who had cancer, who was flown in by the Blues to Game 7, and she got to hoist it with her favorite player, Colton Pareko. Ryan O'Reilly won the Conn's Month Trophy um, after having only five goals in his previous 33 games. He was able to get five goals and four assists in the Stanley Cup Finals, although it did some of that did overlap until Game 3. And he, he won the Consmite Trophy as play, Playoff's Most Valuable Player. He's the only player since Gretzky to score, to, to score in four straight Stanley Cup Finals games, Game 4, Game 5, Game, game 6, and Game 7. Um, and that's a tr tremendous achievement. But... The tremendous achievement was winning the Stanley Cup. And congratulations to the St. Louis Blues, their fans, their organization, every, and everybody associated with them. It was truly deserved. So thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. A comment down below um, who, you, who you would pick for the Conn's Month Trophy for the Blues. 
Um, tell your friends about these videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.